People yeah. are starting to wake up to the idea that the, that the creationists, at least, mm. are, are are running a job on them. I mean, that, that, that this is obviously a scam. Yeah. They just need to take it to the next level up. Yeah. Right? That it's not just the, the anti-science claims that are being made. Mm. It's all of the claims that are being made. There's no mm. truth to any of it. I don't have to say that it's a lie. Yeah. It's enough to say that there's no truth, meaning that yeah. there's you can't distinguish anything that you're asserting from imagination. Mm. That, that your, your citation of John 3.16 is no different than my citation of any passage of the Bhagavad Gita or yeah. the, uh, the Vestas of Zarathustra. Mm. And they're older. Yeah. And then you know, somebody's arguing with me, well, you can't prove they're older. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm T-Jump, the man chair pig of religious apologetics, and you're watching The Atheist Edge. Has arguments? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I've heard Pastor Jeffers say a whole bunch of objectionable things, and this is while trying not to listen to him. Mm. So, I mean, I avoid him as much as I can, but every now and then yeah. something makes the news. Like when he wanted to, he, he thought he had a friendly and fun way to, uh, to, to get people in the Christmas spirit, and that was by arranging to have his uh, ministry boycott their businesses. So, oh. people's livelihoods were supposed to suffer if they didn't bow to him and say Merry Christmas instead of Happy Holidays. So you can't be inclusive of all your customers or we'll threaten you with, you know, you, with, with a backlash. Yeah. And happy is he who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. <laughs> That's always a good one. That's always a good one. Sounds more like Conan. <laughs> <laughs> so... That explains why the jars were empty, because according to Mark, they washed their hands. Jesus is only interested in washing his feet and using somebody else's hair to do it, as if that makes any fucking sense. Okay, so Jesus turns water into wine, and he does it in the pen and Teller way. Of, you know, like you, you, you pour water into the jug, and then you pour, turn the jug upside down, and it pours wine out. You know, we saw Penn and Teller do this. But this is based on Dionysus. Dionysus' miracle, where he had the springs of the earth bring forth wine. That's a much better trick. And Penn and Teller couldn't do that one. So every miracle that is attributed to Jesus is actually attributed to somebody else prior, centuries prior. And this is one of the great examples of that. So I don't understand why, why this is even cited. I mean, even the bit about you know, Jesus walking on water, did you know that Indra had already done that? In Indian theology, centuries before, is there anything about Christian Christian belief that is original, that hadn't already written been written in some other religion prior to that? And we didn't we didn't have four years yeah. to run screaming in the wrong direction. Yeah. To make everything worse, to allow the mentally deranged to buy guns, to allow industries to dump toxic waste into public water supplies, to make it illegal for people to protest commercial ventures like Standing Rock, mm. for example, yeah. Yeah. Where, where suddenly the press are criminalized and free speech is criminalized. Every provision of the First Amendment has been slashed under Trump. Yeah. And we could not afford this. This is more damage than we can fix in another four-year term. Right. right. So gullibility is the sole criteria for redemption because Jesus said, you know, to Thomas, he said, okay, well, you've seen evidence and you believe, and you believed, but blessed is he who has not seen and yet believed. And yet believed. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it's all about. You're supposed to believe impossible nonsense for no good reason. Believe me, because I said so. Kill every man and his brother. Mm -hmm. Immediately after saying, thou shalt not kill. But then, who's the one brother that was a problem? Moses' brother. Apparently. That's the one brother that doesn't get killed. Right. And suddenly, in the next page, he's got priestly robes. Mm -hmm. Bejeweled with emeralds. Mm -hmm. The fuck happened there? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so the guy ends up back in the old man's house, with, the, and the old man has completely lost yeah. his mind now. So he's like, they spoke against the Mormons. He refused yeah, to endorse uh, Mitt Romney until the Republican Party said, "No, you will mm -hmm. think in hive mind with the rest of us. Yeah, and you will bow and do it. You will vote exactly as you're told, mm. and um, you will tell yeah. your you will tell your congregation to vote exactly as we tell you to tell them to vote." Ugh. 
And that's well, why, that's, that's by the, the way, that's why theocracy. America is not a Christian country because that's not supposed to be allowed. That's yeah. why Trump wants to get rid of the Johnson Amendment mm. because that's the only thing pretending to stop this kind of thing, yeah. which we know has been going on in churches forever anyway. When I became an activist 20 years ago, mm. when a church was bragging that their congregation had elected certain judges and senators and such because their ministers told them to vote as a block for this for religious reasons. Yeah. For the purpose being to make the United States a Christian country where they could impose or they where, where they could enforce biblical law. Mm. And they yeah, they they meant and specified Levitical. More wine <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean like the, the whole thing about you know, who Satan is, for example. So in the in uh, the Renaissance we had uh, all of the, you know, we had all the Ninja Turtles, Raphael, Michelangelo, and, and so forth. Shredder. <laughs> <laughs> all of these artists painted the temptation of Eve with the, with the serpent depicted as a woman. Now, the cover of my book is a detail of uh, the pedestal for one of the saints on the entrance of Notre Dame Cathedral. Now, I don't know if that still exists because Notre Dame burnt down. But I was there bef the year before it burned down, and I got a picture of it. And and um, all all of these depict her as a woman. And and the the one in Notre this is Notre Dame, right? I mean, this is like the center of Catholicism at this point. Both uh, there and the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, right, with Michelangelo depicted in every one of those Renaissance painters, she is a woman. The serpent is a woman. That's what happens when those who have the power make the rules and those men who are in charge make up their own stories and, and I'm not saying that, that Moses was in charge and Moses made up his own stories I'm saying that Jewish people made up these stories mm -hmm. to shut everybody else up and keep them in line right because there was never a Moses there was never an Aaron but you know what's really important about that story is you know how God needed Noah to build him an ark Mm -hmm. And he needed. He gave specific instructions on how to build his tabernacle, and he gave specific instructions on how his priests were supposed to be adorned, right? Why is it that God can create planets and dinosaurs and everything that humans can't make, mm -hmm. but God can't create anything humans can make? He can't make a box or a boat. It matters. I wouldn't be surprised if Trump thought that the that the uh, the United States or the world was created last Thursday. Right. I, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised at any idiotic thing that the president. So said. so how so how's what what's the the constitutional and you know freedom from religion damage of that type of rhetoric coming from the Oval Office? Well, it's very damaging, and that's but I can tell you this, and and I don't know how many of you guys were there uh, at the secular caucus at the Texas Democratic Party convention mm. yesterday, or day before yesterday. We were at a secular caucus at the Texas State Democratic Convention and it was overflowing. It was standing room only. Mm. There were hundreds of people packed into one room. It was amazing. Every chair was full. There were people lining up against the walls and people openly expressing their atheism, not just their secularism, but a lot of them saying that it's, it has to be more than just that because it's not just that secular values are being dissed, it's that there's also religious discrimination or discrimination on the basis of religion to ostracize and eliminate or minimize atheists and we can't be putting up with that anymore. Yeah. And there were a number of candidates who were declaring themselves non-believers. Mm. Or a building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, and he thought that was fun, and he said that with a smile. Yeah. But I, now he's wanting to say that America is a Christian country, and of course we have every way to prove that. Right. They're not interested in proof. They're mm -hmm. interested in make-believe. And can you make the people believe? And that's that's the big problem. So you get somebody yeah. like this, you get all these people, and you, and you think that he's on the moral side. Why? Because he's the liar. Mm -hmm. And we're the liars because we can verify that what we're saying is true, apparently. Mm -hmm. That's the upside-down reality we have. Yeah. I was hanging out with a, with a high priest of Forge Coven in San Antonio, who's a the Wiccan group, and I'm, I'm, he says his patron deity is Dionysus, and he tells me all this story. And I'm thinking, you know what? I don't think that God would make Jesus as a sequel to an already popular human idea. It seems to me that either Dionysus could make wine just like Jesus did, or more reasonably, Jesus couldn't do it either. So when yeah. Malcolm McDowell was cast to play the villain in a Star Trek movie, yeah. one of the fans in one of the conventions asked Marina Sergis, so what, it was, what was it like to work with Malcolm McDowell again? 
answer? Well, she was very embarrassed. <laughs> that anybody remembered that Holy first one? Shit. <laughs> I don't. I can't remember. But they, yeah. they had steel rivets all over everything. And, yeah. And then they had all yeah. the air conditioning system. They were originally. They have. The, the, they have a number of stuffed animals in there. But they were going to have a live zoo. Stuffed animals. And they, they'd realized they couldn't put a live zoo of any size because even with the air conditioning system. There would be a huge methane problem right away. Can you imagine on the original ark, loaded yeah. with animals, with one window, like the Bible says? Absolutely not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I com comment that there was, there was somebody that was just now sentenced to death in Pakistan for what? For, for blasphemy. To death? Usually they get a caning over there, don't they? Yep, but this one was for, was to death. Sweet. So mother. over blasphemy. And now think about it. You know, blasphemy should not be a crime. Blasphemy should be a right. And the only way to defend a blasphemy is to defend free speech free speech you don't like. Go to church. For me, the only value any information can have is however accurate you can show it to be. So if I go to church mm -hmm. and you're going to tell me anything about who God is or what he, what he wants or any of that, you have to also be able to show that what you're saying is correct. Right. If you can't show that anything that you said is correct, it's an empty assertion and if you if you're gonna tell me anything and there's no way that you can show that what you said is right it's wrong period exactly, exactly. it's automatically dismissed if you can't verify that anything that you just assert, you're done and, and, and everything I can dismiss everything you just said as being made up because doesn't made up also mean wrong Yes. Don't we criticize people when they start talking about things, when they just assert as fact things that they don't know to be true, right? When then you realize, well, you don't even know what you're talking about. Well, just because they sound confident doesn't mean that they're right. It only says that the serpent is a snake, and that is because the serpent was adapted from uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh, where Lilith lived in, uh, in, in the sacred garden of Inanna in the sacred tree of Hulapu, and she lived with the serpent who could not be tamed. That's where the serpent came from. But when you, when you try to interconnect the mythology with all these things that the Bible doesn't say, then you have to pretend that the serpent was Satan. And then the first time, chronologically, after this story, you, that the Satan is described as walking. Right? And God has to say, well, where were you? Well, I was walking here and walking there. But wasn't it just the case that he was cursed to crawl on his belly all the rest of his days. Now people ignore the thing, the reference to Job and go all the way to Revelations, all the way to the end of the book that says that, sa that Satan was that old serpent. But it doesn't mean that old serpent, now does it? He's that other old serpent. Now, now see, if you go to the middle of the book, we have Jesus saying that the Pharisees were the sons of Satan and that they are a den of vipers. Does he mean that they are all literally snakes and that they're literally the sons of devil? No, of course not. So when we get into Revelations, it says that old serpent and then we forget the line right after that that is standing on the beach. So back then, the idea of dragons having legs was common. So you know, it's not crawling on the belly all the rest of his days. It's a multi-headed fucking dragon standing up. To be no more, the Republican Party has to completely collapse for us to fix the damage. It's like one candidate was saying yesterday, if you want to go backward, put it in R. If you want to go forward, put it in D. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's King Ghidorah standing on the fucking beach. I was, I was amazed. Wow. And, and a huge audience for that. And like, I'm yeah. glad that somebody is waking up for that. And it took, I'm sorry to say, it took a disaster like Trump getting elected. Mm. You know, to stop all those people who used to say, the problem is it's a broken system. Don't vote, don't contribute to a broken system. Yeah. Protest by abstaining. Yeah. Which of course, they, they changed their mind. Went, oh, if we don't vote, we get Trump? Yeah. That's what happens? Chili. How do you make it? Well, I, I do mine with beans, and people in, in Texas will call that sacrilege. But when, I, <laughs> but when I started making chili, it started with beans as the first ingredient. So I was given beans as a child, and we started adding stuff to the beans to make it hotter and better and richer and so forth. And so now I have, I don't know, like 16 spices that we put into it, and, and it all has to be cooked in for hours, and there's, there's certain rituals on how you have to cook in the, the, oh. the, the garlic and the onions with the beef, and then you have to put in more garlic and more onions when it stews. And there's just certain ways in which everything has to be cooked, and then we have to add beer to it. It has to be a certain kind of beer, and there's a, there's an awful lot that goes into making. He asked, Ref, Jeffress asked his parishioners or his congregation to give him a, what was it, a hundred million dollars, oh. and they did, because they already had another yeah, grossly oversized this? church on the other side of this one, on the other street behind it. Yeah. But that was like a hundred years old. They had to have a new glass smarmy building. Yeah. And of course, these people never 
actually work for anything. I mean, it's always just give me your money. Look at Ken Ham with his hundred million dollar facade that's made to look like a boat. Yeah. A boat, a wooden yeah. wall yep. made to look like a boat affixed to a building that is collapsing under its own weight after a year of sitting still with a concrete foundation. Can you imagine oh, okay. what would have happened if it was loaded and on rough seas? Uh, like, yeah, that's what? another thing about scripture. Why the fuck does it matter? Do you realize that most of the Bible has stories in it that are that don't pertain to anything fuck all i mean they don't give not only do they not give us any practical knowledge like you know what, what reason why you wash your hands wouldn't it be nice to know about viruses or bacteria or or or, or um you know, and, and contaminants or any of the other reasons why why we wash our hands, why the, the purification of water, purification of food, any of that. Wouldn't it be nice to have some practical value information? But we don't get that in the Bible. Yeah. Well, where, where's the germ theory gospel? Where's <laughs> we get ritual traditions that make no fucking sense. And then we get the Ten Commandments erased and then replaced by a completely different Ten Commandments where everything is keeping the Feast of the Leavened Bread and keeping the Feast of Weeks and all that and don't boil a baby goat in his own mother's milk and all that shit. N none of this this has any practical value or use. It's all just ceremonial traditions. Yeah, uh, so I, I, was, I was a Christian uh, nominally at one point, uh, and then I became a reborn Christian for all of a couple of hours, and, uh, and until a, a good friend of mine uh, told me just how dishonest Christianity is. When I, I said, well, how do I know that this is really you know, the spirit of Jesus and that I'm not just fooling myself? And he said, yeah, just keep telling yourself it's Jesus until you believe it. That's what did it. That's that's what did it. So there was there was no more of that. And then I went into neo pagan spiritualism, and I started investigating, you know, transcendental meditation and that sort of thing. And eventually, I kind of worked my way out of that when I realized that I could make anybody see, feel, hear, whatever they already believed. You just set up the ambiance and you create a positive feedback loop. They will create the rest of the illusion themselves. And when I realized that I'm doing that to other people, it was only a short minute before I realized I was doing it to myself. What the fuck is wrong with these people that they have to come up with all these justifications for folklore? You believe in a fucking fable that has no, literally, no truth in it. It's so hard for people to realize that their pastors are predators. I mean, look how long it took for people to realize and how many of them still don't realize that the Catholic Church has been protecting pedophile priests for, for decades uh, upon decades, right? By, yeah. by, the, by the thousands? And still. Yes, and there are people who still don't get that. When they, when they find the mass graves of yeah. the orphanages and so forth, I don't know if you're familiar in Ireland. They, oh, that they, one I don't know. Yeah, they, they found a, a huge mass grave of, of, uh, of, of babies from these, from these uh, children's homes. They were just undocumented. They would just they would, they'd die and they'd hide their bodies. Uh. So they have, yeah, so there's hundreds of unaccounted for yeah. children over the last century. And why is God so terribly afraid that we will believe in other gods. If you were God and there was one God and it's you, would it matter? Wouldn't you rather that people like have some understanding of the real world? You wouldn't care about their religion, right? You certainly wouldn't damn people over what they believe. If they behave in a godly way, meaning that they that they smite their their you know associated villages and they. Uh, for worshiping other gods, and they kill every man and his brother, and and, and they, they hamstring all the horses, and, and kill all the old people, burn the village to the ground, take all their booty, and oh, by the way, take their children, murder all the little boys, but keep the preteen girls, and it, yes, it specifies preteen girls, and keep those for your sex slaves. If you get behave in a godly way, wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, if you're a god, if you're going to judge anything at all, wouldn't it be that kind of behavior that would piss you off? I, I wouldn't give a shit what they believe. I would rather that they know things. And so my book, my Bible, would be completely different than the Bible that is written. It would actually have practical information. <laughs> uh, well, you, you can't reach everybody, especially yeah. when they're that age. And when they think that they, when they, they have no idea what our position is. And it's, a, it's amazing when you, when you get a chance to talk to somebody like that and explore their mind, to get them to explain to you what their perception is. And, and you would be like, my reaction is that I'm, I'm typically aghast hmm. that somebody can be that deluded. I mean, like we, we asked somebody uh, the other day, uh, what did you think, what did you think microevolution is? Microevolution. The guy hmm. said, microevolution is when you stick your head in water and you grow gills. Wow. <laughs> I asked somebody else once upon a time, uh, what do you think evolution is? And she says, uh, one group of molecules gathers together to become a man and another group of molecules gathers together to become a fish. 
Wow. Then we don't need a draft right. at all. So, I mean, if, if we're going to have a draft, yes, we okay. should be under equal equal re responsibility, but we shouldn't have that responsibility, especially since we can't justify any of our military actions. How long you have it, but when certain, the first time we mentioned Satan, now God may have cursed the serpent for all the rest of his days, but the first time we mentioned Satan, in Job, of course, God and, and, and Satan are buddies, they're pals, they have, they're, chronologically in the story, they have never had a falling out. What's up with that? They're friends. And then they make a bet, hey, how can I fuck over this other guy? for no goddamn reason, right? And then blame you for it, so that in, in, in the end, God says, the devil made me do it. And so the only evil, the only time that Satan kills anybody is because God made him do it as part of a, one of the conditions of their bet. When you've got people that, are, that have been lied to that badly and mm. never, ever in their lives encouraged to think or analyze or be skeptical, well, they've always been told that skepticism is, is cynicism mm. and that the skeptics mm. and the cynics miss out on the awe and wonder that only the believers can understand. So right. you're just supposed to swallow, you know, with credulity, whatever they tell you. Yeah. So yeah. that's a problem. How do you reach those people when they've never had a grasp of, con of, of objective thought? I was just having an argument with a girl down the street here who was telling me that she can verify the truth of what she says. Okay, do it. So she shows John 3.16. No, you're going to show me how John 3.16 is true, not show me John 3.16. The, the, the claim right. is not the proof. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the assertion yeah, is not the evidence, but mm -hmm. they don't understand that. Yeah. Well, I don't know that I have a dream show, but i tell you what, I would like to talk to Oprah once just about how atheists experience awe and wonder. What was her name? The, um, the, the the woman Diane, the one the the, the one that went, did the swim swim to Cuba. Yeah, which I, and obviously Satan was somebody who worked for God in that interpretation. Now, by the way, the character of Satan comes from Hashatan, which is a Zoroastrian idea. It means the enemy, the, the adversary. Yeah. So so in in the the Jewish scriptures, they only have this reference to the Satan character who is actually working for God, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But the Christians skipped over the Jewish mythology and we know that, that that Judaism was based more on Zoroastrianism than any prior belief. All the scholars agree on that. But the Christians reach back ahead of the Jews and skipped over what what they didn't adapt and they adapted this this Satan character, Hashitan, also known as Araman the opposer, and they put that into the Christian mythology directly lifted from Zoroastrianism. They had the idea, which was unlike the Jews, the Jews had this belief in Sheol, right, which was the same thing that, that the Hellenists believed, that everybody that dies goes to the land of the dead to be dead. People are literally dead over there. It's like an old folks home where everybody's asleep. So every, everybody's unconscious, and it doesn't matter whether you were good or bad, everybody that's dead goes there. But then the Zoroastrian belief was, uh, and this, this is... Um, Oh, fuck, what's his name? I, I hate when these, having these senior moments where I can't remember somebody's name on the fly. But <coughs> Zarathustra is asking uh, Ahura Mazda about this. And so, so the, 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 the mythology was that the righteous man, when he dies, will ascend to the kingdom of justice and truth, ruled by, Arama, uh, ruled by Ahura Mazda. But uh, the, the, the evil man, will descend into the kingdom of the lie, ruled by Araman the opposer, which is Hashitan, which is Satan, which is the origin of the, of the devil myth. So that's where Christians get the erroneous idea that is not supported in their own scripture at all, that good and bad people will be judged accordingly. It's not, you're not judged whether you're good or bad, you're judged whether you're gullible or not. Do you believe impossible nonsense for no good reason? Yes? Okay, you can be forgiven. Did you believe impossible nonsense for no good reason? No, I needed to see evidence. Sorry, you're going to hell. That's what it is. There's no justification beyond that. If, uh, if you were, if you were a, a, a perfectly evil person, you, you would be the most selfish, vindictive, cruel bastard. that You can be Hitler. You would be the worst person in the world. But if you are like Hitler and say that everything that you do against the Jews is because of your religious belief in Christianity and your support of Christianity, well, then you're, you can be forgiven. Not guaranteed that you're going to be forgiven, but you can be forgiven. All sins can be forgiven if you but believe. But if you don't believe, then it doesn't matter how good you are because the only sin that cannot be forgiven is the sin of disbelief. It doesn't yeah. matter what a liar you are. It doesn't matter how wrong you are. As long yeah. as you sound... And nobody understands religion better than I do. I am, <laughs> I am the best at religion. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we went and had uh, uh, boiled crab yesterday, the Cajun Vietnamese fusion, the, the, the sauce that's made with ghost pepper. Only I didn't wear the gloves. Oh. 
so I couldn't go to sleep until like after two in the morning because my hands, my hands were still on fire this morning from the absorption of the capsaicin through the skin. My, my hands were on fire this morning, today, on the way down here, and my arms were on fire last night. I mean, just wear the gloves. <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of bewildered at yeah. the people that I've run into and the, the way that they claim things. America is a Christian country, according to the one person I was just talking to a few minutes ago, because she said so. Ooh. Uh, because why? Mm. They, she was told that it's America, and that's the argument. Mm. America is a Christian country, and I can prove it because the founders were Christian. No, they weren't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, 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 I can find it like the, 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 the tripod of bases for anyone's position. All three legs are going to be falsehoods, all mm. of them. Or they're going to be falsehoods, frauds, and fallacies. Mm. And that will damn you to hell. So gullibility is the sole criteria for redemption. Did you pay your tithe? No? Fuck you. That's it. I mean, even when, when Hume talked about this, and a lot of Christians want to bring up, you know, Hume's uh, problem with what, what do they call it in induction. No. Yeah, I mean, he says that we have to, have to make the same assumption that a baby would or that an animal would, which is that the data that we are getting from our senses has some degree of reality to it. We have to make this assumption because it is literally madness to do otherwise. We cannot function any other way. Now, if science works with the models that work, right? Even, even when we know that there's a flaw with a, with a hypothesis, like the Dalton's model of the atom, for example, we still use, well, we know that it's not an accurate representation. Oh, the regular standard model? But we still use it because we know that in, there are certain mathematic equations that, in which this model works, and, so, and these have productive success. So we're going to use this model because it works. We have to use the model that works. Now, yeah. we, might be able, we might get rid of Big Bang cosmology whenever we figure out a, another explanation that covers all of the data better and has more explanative power. But until then, we got to use the, the Big Bang, right? It's the only thing we've got that accounts for what it does or explains fuck all at the moment, right? So we have to work with, with the scientific models of work. Now, here we have a model in which we have data that is implying that there's a reality here, and we can get convoluted and we can pretend that none of that matters, but try to function on the assumption that, that any that, that reality isn't real. It's got to it, be a starting point. It is literal madness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go to prison, you convert to Christianity. Isn't that convenient? That now suddenly you are embraced by your newly found brethren. And it doesn't matter what horrible, evil atrocities you committed before that. Hell, they'll, they'll pay you to go on the speaking circuit and, sa and share your grand story to... Exactly. Uh, Whatever reinforces the make-believe. Exactly. So there's absolutely no reason to believe that reality is not real. Yeah. There's every reason to believe that it is real. And it's not even, you don't even have to presuppose it. You can analyze it all you want. So it's a presupposition of something you suppose before you get there. It's not, it, it, but then when you evaluate that, and then you come to this other conclusion, you realize logically... There's no reason for this to be illusion. Logically, if we take out every middleman, as you say, if we take out all of the other conspiracy theories, we just come down to the basic fact, what if reality is real? What if everything is exactly as it appears to be? Yeah. Especially when he's not mentioned by anybody ever. Well, we get, we get the vague reference that there were many witnesses mm -hmm. to, what were they? Many, there were many witnesses to undead saints, you know, doing the thriller in downtown Judea, right? Mm -hmm. That's... <laughs> There were many witnesses. None that could be found, none that could corroborate. There's not a single mention of history. Even people who believe Jesus existed admit that, that Jesus is not mentioned by anybody that would have, should have, heard of him in that time. Mm -hmm. Nami. No. Zip. Which superpower would you have? Any one superpower? Time travel. Why? I want to, I want to, I want to record nature documentaries from different periods of geologic history. Oh, wouldn't that be badass? <laughs> like, like in the Jurassic period or Cretaceous? Yeah, I mean, just imagine, you, you, you're getting a mating season between two sauropods and you get to oh, film that dude. and say, oh, that's how they do it. <laughs> Commonly said that faith is pretending to know things you don't know, right? Asserting baseless speculation as though it were fact, which is dishonest. So if you want to, if you really want truth, if you want to pursue truth, if you want to improve understanding, the first thing you have to do yeah. is abandon your faith. Yeah. Yeah, we can verify that, that Pontius Pilate existed, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that even the believers understand, or at least a few of them, maybe not the guy I talked to last night, but at least a few of them realize that if we had a time machine where you could go back and observe 
you know, like with a drone camera, you know, and an imperceptible drone, cam drone camera going back in time just to review history. You're not changing history, you're just watching history. You can, you can see what happened, you can hear what happened, you would never find Jesus. Even if you understood Aramaic, you would never find Jesus. You would find three or four guys that could, at least three, that, that, could, that could qualify as contributing a part of the story, but you'd never find the one guy who contributed to the whole story. That doesn't exist. You'd never find that guy. But the problem with this is it has nothing to do with truth. It has nothing to do with what you can show to be true or verify correct. Mm. The only way that you can improve understanding is to find the flaws in your current perspective and correct them, right? Yep. Well, people are not about that. It's right. all about make-believe. And the reason that it is is because religion is a means of manipulation of the masses. When you've got one guy who can say, hey, everybody give me your money, yeah. and he walks out with $100 million the yeah. next day, that's a great gig. Or right? multiple private jets, right? Exactly, and that's why we still have religion is because we have stupid people people we have this way of scamming people well, I don't want to say stupid but no, they're certainly yeah. they're certainly credulous gullible and of course you would never find the flood Sodom and Gomorrah that, that you would you would might be able to find a city that was destroyed by whatever means you might it might even be one of those cities that they're talking about or both of them with the volcanic eruption or something along those lines mm -hmm. yeah but you'll never find the pillar of salt right and of all the ridiculous things that people believe the guy who absconds into a cave after his wife is conveniently eliminated from the equation by being turned into a pillar of salt, and he gets drunk because that's what you do, mm -hmm. and then his daughters molest him. Now, what, what is more likely? That the daughters really thought that they had to get their father drunk enough to make them pregnant, or the guy who's already drunk is making up the excuses for how they seduced him? Yeah. What's more likely here? The fact that anybody believes that story, if you're stupid enough to believe that story, well then of course you believe that a man lived inside a fish for three fucking days, you stooge. Don't market your videos for kids. <laughs> oh, you know, there's the, there, there's the whole issue now that, that YouTube has, if, 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 they're, if they're automatic Animation. systems, if their systems think that your video is marketed for children or is meant to be, No monetization. There's no monetization, so if you, just give up on making money on this, because every one of my, my videos that has anything controversial in it, and that's my channel, right? If it's controversial at all, it's demonetized. And for guys like Dark Matter 2525, who does animation, he's screwed. Yep. Because that's automatically for kids. Yep. Okay, that'll do it. Thanks a lot for coming on it. My pleasure. We need to do another movie night. If you can stay in Texas for any length of time. Yeah, can, uh, <laughs> fuck it. It is what it is. It's Arn Raw. There could be naked clowns in the background on fire, it wouldn't matter. Good enough post caption or something. Okay, yeah, we're good, we're square, we're rolling. All right. Nice, awesome. All right, here we go. Uh, could oh. we have some more people like throwing sinks and stuff? I know, right? <laughs> it's all good. <laughs>I'm sorry, I'm ranting again. It's cool. It's like, it's like these people believe in Baal. Should I appear to them? <laughs> nah, I'll just smite them all. I, I, I wouldn't even do it myself. I will have yeah. my, my zealots. Minions, go yeah. smite them. Because why is it that God Burn needs other... Their why does it? Why does God need people to do his work? So God gives very specific instructions. on. So if we, you know, like a, two, a page or two earlier... And said, thou shalt not kill. And then Moses comes down the mountain with that commandment and, said, and sees that his brother has built a golden calf. Then the, the commandment becomes, kill every man and his brother. Well, whose brother built the golden calf? That was Moses' brother, Aaron. But in the next page, did Aaron get killed? Like I said, it, no. He, you know, suddenly Aaron is a priest. And Aaron also has these detailed descriptions in the Bible, as if we need them now, to describe how many jewels 
you know, and what kind of precious metals are to be, you know, sewn into his raiment for his... his so uh, help you if you have six jewels instead of seven jewels. So we need, we need God to give specific instructions on how we are supposed to, you know, bequeath the priestly with this finament or this finery and how we are supposed to build the tabernacle because God can't build a fucking tabernacle, right? And, and God can't build a boat or a box or a building. No, God can't do anything... I mean, God can make dinosaurs and planets and everything that humans can't make, but he can't make anything humans can make. Or an art. Because those things can't, that's a box. So those things can't appear by themselves, so people have to make them. Almost as if God didn't exist. <laughs> like, I, I, the priest, am telling you that the priest must have a jeweled robe. Exactly. And only green M&Ms in his dressing room. Exactly. <laughs> yes, Reverend Copeland. Yes, you, you must have a $20 million mansion and a $20 million citation jet to go along with it. Yes. How fucking stupid are people? Why the hell do they still believe this? Why is it we have, we have very arrogant scholars with high degree educations in this and they believe in absolute bullshit, but they're very arrogant about it and so superior, you know. Very arrogant. You should believe in that. Oh, fuck me. I mean, come on. I mean, why can you not show there's any truth to it? Oh, I've shown all kinds of it. No, you've shown, you've, you've shown all kinds of fallacies. That's what it is. Right? Subjective impressions, logical fallacies, frauds, falsehoods, fantasies. That's it. That's all you got. You don't have anything that actually indicates that what you're saying is true. And we have a hell of a lot that proves that it isn't. Oh, but I have a degree in philosophy. Fuck you. <laughs> Example three. <laughs> Part of the problem, in addition to just being about like literally nothing, is that to, to call some of these things undesigned coincidences, you have to take passages completely out of context and apply a whole new reading to them that was is not at all necessary to these passages. Um, so, if you go to John one, for example. That's a chapter that starts with uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's all hey, starts. That's with not John one. That's the one all about where Jesus is pre-existent. He was with God in the beginning, and so. Wasn't on, that so John three sixteen? No, no, I'm sorry. You're you're right. I'm a couple sorry. chapters later, but yeah. yeah. There, there's a, there's a few in there like that. But this is specifically about John one because after all that stuff about Jesus being pre-existent, they start talking about John the Baptist and him paving the way for for Jesus. And yeah, John, and I think I think John the Baptist was real. It's possible. Yeah, yeah, I think John the Baptist was was both real and a and one of a handful of inspirations for Jesus, and that the storytellers, because that's what all this is, the storytellers wanted to uh, take over the popularity of John the Baptist, and so they have to write a story where John the Baptist then bequeaths all of his power over to Jesus. So now the readers have the authority of John the Baptist transferred into their new character, Jesus, which. The, the, the Muslims did the same thing. I mean, there was, there was a the Persian story where there's a Persian who, uh, Zoroastrian who converts to, to Islam, and he goes to meet Jesus, who still exists and was, and was in their uh, theology, never crucified or killed. So Jesus still exists, and he comes out of his house every day and heals people because Jesus has this power because he's a prophet of God. And this Persian comes to Jesus because he wants to know the truth of God. And Jesus says, well, I am not the one to tell you. You need to go to Muhammad. So now they've, they've appropriated Jesus to refer Christians to Muhammad. And this, the, that same kind of, that same tactic, the same strategy is being used where they kind of, they write an additional story for John the Baptist so that he appropriates his power into this new character, Jesus. And that's where God appears and has to say, this is my son in whom I'm very proud. Oh, yeah, I mean, always, yeah, that wouldn't be surprising at all. I mean, this is talking about uh, John 1.30. Uh, John the Baptist says, This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. Now, given the context of the chapter, and you, you'd think that would be talking about all that pre-existence, he was with God in the beginning, all that kind of stuff. And... I mean, that would make sense, but what if there was more to it? What if it was about birth order? Because in Luke 1, it notes that John the Baptist was born about six months before Jesus was. Huh? <laughs> you don't have to be significantly older, though, 
really in the story. So you have you have the, the more popular guy, and then you have the new usurper that the new cult wants to to supplant. Old their and guy. busted, new hotness. <laughs> but it's yeah. <laughs> sorry, it, 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 it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. I mean, you can have people who are contemporary in age. Mm -hmm. You know, the one is the more popular, and then you just bequeath that popularity over. And okay, your your story is done now. We can go have you beheaded or whatever the fuck happened to him. And then all of that popularity goes to Jesus. And it, and it reminds me of like, okay, so what happened to John the Baptist? Okay, well, he gets killed, and so his his followers want to want to pretend that their guy didn't really die. It's like, like the, the Elvis worshippers. They want to believe that Elvis is working in a 7-Eleven somewhere, you know, that he's still alive. Same thing happens with all these believers when they have their, their little cult leader, and the cult leader dies, and they don't want to accept that he's dead. Well, now they, you have the Jesus cult that follows the... the um, the previous cult, the John the Baptist cult, and now they, they want to they, they want to bequeath their power over in there. Then Jesus cult leader dies, and now they have to deify him, because that's what people do, right? We will start saying, oh, you know, that guy, the guy that was just killed in this car wreck. Well, he was the greatest guy. Well, you might have hated him yesterday, before you knew he was in a car wreck, and now he's okay. Hmm. You know, now now he you know, now you have respect for him for whatever fucking reason, just because he's dead. But if you if you believed in him already, well, now you can't accept that he's dead. Especially not if the character that you that you're you're talking about was not initially even really a single real guy. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you hint at mythicism, then everybody scoffs. And, well, you're not you're not a scholar because every historian that was raised Christian never questions the belief they were raised with. Well, of course, they didn't. Yeah, and it's and it's like e even. Like you said, in order to make the case that John is secretly referring to birth order, uh, you have to make, you have to basically ignore the very next verse, where John says, "I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel." So John the Baptist is specifically saying he's there to call the way for Jesus. He's not talking about birth order at all. But in order to make it some sort of magical divine fingerprints on the book. You have to try and weasel your way into reading between the lines and think it's talking about something completely different than what it's obviously talking about in context. Atheist Edge. Walking the edge of what some consider offensive. But your feelings don't matter here. Only facts. Chris, how many are there? I think I four or five on here. Oh, good, but good, good. Okay. We, we could probably just do a, the edit out Aaron Ra ranting and do yeah, just like 15 just minutes. Edit me show. out. <laughs> Edgy commentary on the dangers of doctrine, the foibles of faith, the bullshit of belief, the stupidity of superstition, and the idiocy of indoctrination. Do you have anything darker? Uh, you want a porter? Yeah. yeah okay. gotcha. want my porter. Kick up the, AP, the ABV, would you? Oh, shit. Okay, so... With razor-sharp wit, curiosity, and critical thought, we take an unblinking look at today's religions. We are Atheist Edge.